So yeah, I will start from uh, yeah, introduce my major research topic. Uh, I majored in architecture and my major research topic actually is about the wooden granaries of South China, uh, about their building crafters and uh, it is determining uh, factors. And during my investigation around the Sichuan province, I find a very special type of building existing in uh, Jiarong region. So it is a very special valley in uh, Jiarong region, uh, Japu Valley. I think I don't know where, where I pronounce it right. And uh, yeah. this is a border area between Ando area and the uh, Jiarong area. Uh, Jiarong is a kind of Tibetan agricultural region of Sichuan and Ando. Uh, they are a kind of pasture region uh, of Sichuan, of Tibetan area in the past. So uh, this is also a kind of junction of two different cultures. Meanwhile, there was a very important chapter road across this region from the agricultural region to the pasture region before uh, 1950s. So actually, uh, before this region, uh, in the past, uh, they are quite unsafe uh, society uh, area in the past. Okay, <laughs> then I, I would like to say this region. Uh, this is a very called Japu. The main area there is a river called Japu River, and the uh, uh, area here uh, they speak a special language called Japu language, which I learned from a very wonderful book, this dictionary. Uh, dictionary, Japu, Chinese, and uh, France. I'm sorry, I could not read France, French, so I had to read it in Chinese. And uh, this region is a very high attitude region compared to Danba. The region is uh, the statement of this region are at an attitude between. 2750 to 3500 meters higher than Danba area. And uh, another special thing is due to the local river, it's a very big river, and it is very typology. This region is much humidity than the surrounding Tibetan regions. So this is the dictionary we already quite familiar with. And this is the attitude of their, uh, this region. And the, uh, this drawing is from a very nice book about Sichuan Tibetan divarings. And it describes the settlements of Danba area, but our uh, study area, the Japu area, is higher than Danba. And uh, from this, we can see the uh, topograph, uh, topograph of this uh, region with very steep. Uh, yeah. And uh, we can see uh, some very impressive, very uh, high uh, stone buildings in the villages. This is the Ba village, one settlement of Japu region. And we can see the even closer. You see their overhanging uh, drying racks.
the eight high stories Deverings is one of the oldest building in Saar region, which was said to have been built in around the middle Qing dynasty. So it's around the um, middle 18th century, I think. And uh, the Deverings has its own name, Te Sa House, as other Tibetan Deverings of Jiarong region built into Si period. There are diverse of differing forms in Sichuan Tibetan area, but tower differings of this region is the tallest type. And for me, it's also the most impressive and the most complicated one. We can see these two pictures. The left one is the tower divarings of this region, and the right one is a typical tower in Jarong region. This is from Sopo, a famous, uh, a famous uh, village. And we can see they lose similarity, but also, but the different thing is local people need to live inside these tower divarings. And even with their family, uh, even with their agriculture uh, harvester and their animals. Here, I would like to start from a village of this region, located in a very basin at the altitude of two thousand seven hundred meters. And we can see from this layout of the villages, the red part we can see is the Deverin, and the, the yellow one, the very tiny yellow one on one river is the water mirror, is a public water mirror for the whole uh, villages. And also in, in the middle of this photo, we can see another shining, uh, yellow uh, square, it is the pagoda. Also, it belongs to these uh, villages. The villages consist of only seven families. The stairs of Tibetan villages of this region are generally much smaller than Han villages. And each family Owns their own tower divarings and their own fielders uh, quite connect to their divarings. The layout of the religious is closely related to their living style and the social background. And the seven tower divarings close gathering together at the junction of two rivers. We see from this drawing is a layout of a nearby village next to the last one. And uh, it's uh, also a kind of typical village of Japu Valley. And uh, we can see uh, each uh, tower divarings owns their own fielders, and their fielders own quite clear boundary which built by fence or short stone walls. And the sound divarings you can see also their own, their own small village, uh, vegetable uh, gardens and the enclosed by low stone walls. And we can see a photo of a local villages and we can see how they're daring to gel like a very defensive, strong fold. And such kind of village layout improve the defensive ability of this village. Then let's come to the divarium. 
uh, usually a tower devouring of this region is always a high, strong, and enclosed fold with very few opening on its surface. Due to the unsafe society background during the Si period, local had to build their house under defensive consideration is their main consideration for building. But they also need to live inside. So actually there are three main functions need to be taken into account when building such kind of dividing. They should consider living inside and they should consider how to organize their agriculture produce inside and also for their enemies. Yeah. Animals, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, so local uh, farmers were inclined to integrate their time consuming high line berry harvest uh, activities and the granaries into their own uh, small fold so to protect their harvest from the uh, strangers and the rainy season. This kind of tower developments can be seen as a vertical farm. Then we can see here there is uh, five uh, frost plants, and we can see how difficult they try to integrate those things together because such kind of requirements raise some problems for the construction. For the defense, uh, defensive consideration, they need to build high buildings with very heavy, heavy walls. Uh, the walls were around one meter wide. We can see from the from this plan, the black line was very heavy, and the last the indoor space become very narrow and very dark. But for the harvest process of highland berry, they need good ventilation condition. They need to be in an open air, and they need to be in a dry air. So this, all of these requirements from the agriculture uh, conflict with this narrow and the enclosed interior plants determined uh, by defensive requirements. Another building. So this is the main case study I did in my dissertation. It's a kind of typical tower devouring, also one of the most famous one in this region. It's called Tersa building. Tersa is the building's name. So the following part will show how local builders did all their effort to organize space for searching a balance between defense and their life. We start from the ground floor. And the, from the ground floor, uh, from the, I think from the right side, you can see the photo is the owner of this devourings, open the door, made door for me. And, uh, uh, and uh, from the middle, we can see the ground floor of this tower devouring. There used to be a low stone wall around the basement and the enclosing a private garden for the vegetable and the animals. The main entrance of this building is opened to the east part facing their highland berry field. The inner space of the ground floor is divided into two equal areas and the one part, one room was applied for keeping animals inside in the cold winter time. And the second floor is made uh, mainly used for storing hay for the animals. And there are also a very small tour rooms enclosed by a wooden wall at the end of the west area 
for storing agricultural tools in the carpentry tools inside. You can see in the middle uh, images. And then the third floor uh, is the main or the most important space of the whole delivering. It's the living space of this uh, building. It's called kitchen in the Tibetan. Uh, and also I show the, the, the name, the Japu term of this, this, this room, but I did not know how to pronounce it. And the, this space, it, it is a kind of multi-function space. It can apply for cooking, dinner, and the meeting. And uh, also, uh, this, the decoration of this room is quite nice. You can see inside that they will keep a lot of, the, for them, is the most precious thing inside this room. And uh, in the middle of this room will be a old open fire space on the center. And also behind this main room, there is a small room in the east area connect to this kitchen room. It's a kind of storeroom for storing zangba wine and other precious foods. It's behind the ladder, you can see from the middle uh, images. And then the first floor is again a hay storage. The hay in this area are most straws of highland berry. So they were stone in here after the thrashing process on the topmost of this building. And uh, on the right side, you can see a uh, beam through the wall, and it is for supporting the up structure. And the fifth story is applied also for hay storage and the food storage. And the from this from this floor. They are overhanging verandas built outside. And the, this kind of uh, space are used for drying highland berry in harvest season. And the, in some other seasons, they can be used, used for drying radishes and the beans. And it can also be used for storage straws in some cases. So I picked some part <laughs> from the dictionary. The overhanging verandas is with drying rents. So we, we have to describe this a very long time in English because we did not get an equal word in English. And uh, this kind of structure is one most important characters of local tower developments. We can also find this in some surrounding mountainous areas. And this is also one important working space for locals. They also built their toilet in this place. And the layout of the uh, cantilevered verandas is the result of adapting the local environment factors. So this kind of topmost area has the best ventilation of this building and it is the ideal place for hanging their harvest in here. And also, it is support ventilation of the whole buildings. Outside the harvest period, white birch stick will be woven outside the overhanging verandas and to form enclosed surface to prevent 
cold wind into the building. And we can also see how lead was used inside. And the indoor space of the fifth uh, of the sixth floor is one most complicated one. It is divided into two different function space, bedroom and the granaries. So the, see the, the right part is two bedrooms and the left part are two wooden logger construction granaries. And uh, so there is also one short corridor between these two granaries, which can be used as a tem temporary storage place. And uh, we can find from these two uh, stories that we can see instead of storm walls, in these two stories, they began to use wooden pillars and the beams as interior suppose. And uh, this kind of wooden suppose can help to create a more open space to improve the condition of working indoors. And it can also be based on the requirement of reducing the building load and the difficulty of construction. Here we come to the topmost uh, floor. This floor consists of two main functions. One is worship space and one is for harvest and working space. The front of stairs occupies nearly the half area of this plant. So the terrace receive most and the longest sunshine, which also important for the developments. Due to it is from uh, primary function and the environmental factors, the orientation of this terrace is also rather important. Terrace of most local tower developments were designed to face south or east to accept a strong sunshine as much. And the big room of the topmost story is named Lecture Hall, Jing Tang. It is mainly for worship and it is the most shared space in the developments. Only monks and their family members are around to enter this space. And, but, however, this shared space can be also used as a temporary storage for Highland Berry during a harvest period. Especially in the rainy season, the threshing work usually will last several days. And when they cannot finish it in one day, they will put their highland berry inside the lecture hall. And there is also a wide porch in front of this room, supporting by extended beams. And this space is one of the most convenient uh, domic, uh, place for local women in the past when they did their house workers during the daytime because it's the most warm and lighting space. This is uh, where Yunfan, Suya, and I visit last year. I think you already can remember this place. And we can see a pretty yeah. girl inside. And uh, in some region, like Suyue, uh, the topmost part would be also like this. Local people enlarge the similar outdoor space and uh, for maybe for more drying product. Then after them, we can know that uh, 
by different main functions of each flow, this variance can generally uh, be divided into four sections on the vertical uh, direction. Uh, the lower part is the, for the livestock or the animal, and then the middle part is for the middle uh, daily life for the human. And then the upper part for me is for the uh, agricultural worker and the worship space. And the, sometimes there will be some bedrooms on the top space. When we see other uh, plants from this region, uh, here I uh, list uh, four different uh, divariants of this region. We can see very similar uh, vertical organization. The functional organization here are quite similar in the vertical uh, actuations. They were put their teaching in the middle, usually and the lower part is always uh, for the animal, and the upper part is always for the agricultural work and uh, their worship space and also their granaries. And uh, when we connect it to the local language, uh, these are terms, terminologies, which I picked from the dictionary. And uh, I find that uh, the functional space in their language are a kind of equal to the flow numbers. I did not know whether it is an uh, understanding uh, problem or they really fit them together. So for me, uh, like the term of the second flow is usually, is always connected to the teaching. And the term of fourth flow is uh, fixed to the bedroom. So we can find that there are kind of regulation of the organization in their mind about their house, how it should be. And uh, then we will see, say more about the harvest. Highland Ferry in this region is the main traditional set for the local um, Sorry? Um, you, the sound is not the best in the world. Could you, the, your voice, we cannot hear you clearly now. Oh, uh, can you hear me now? It's better now. It's better, so I, I put it close to me. <laughs> okay. Okay. Uh, here I would like to explain the highland berry can grow quite well in a high altitude area. You can see it can grow in high mountainous areas, like this photo show. And in Japu region, the harvest period of highland berry is from middle of September to the end of September. So in this area is also the end of the rainy season. So there is always rain in this area, uh, in this period. The harvest process of highland berry in Garon region can be structured into the following steps. The wrapping, the transportation, the drying last uh, 10 to 20 days or even one month more, and the thrashing and the venue. And the, in Japu Ferry, most of the stamps they finish it in their house. So this is most due to the local humidity river and the unsafe social condition in the park. And uh, usually they will use short handle stick for uh, 
uh, seekers for harvesting on the tide, the stalkers into uh, abundance afterwards. Generally, this kind of transportation work was women's duty in the past. So we, we can see, uh, I use this drawing to show how uh, harvester uh, process they uh, integrate into this, uh, into their deliveries. And we start from the uh, old woman and uh, put the, the transport, his, her harvest into her house. They were used uh, ladders to drive up down through the whole house. And uh, it is a kind of difficult work when you uh, carry a heavy things on your back. Most of the opening of this staircase, you can find on the drawing. Or also when you visit this area, you will find it also. Most of the opening of for this staircase are much bigger than uh, necessary size to around one person to pass it by. But it is just for people to carry their uh, harvest uh, through these openings. So usually the openings dimension will be two meters, around uh, 1.5 meters to even more than two meters for people to carry things up and down. But sometimes locals will also build a temporary outdoor shortcut to avoid the difficulty for carrying highland berries through the narrow and dark interior space. And they will put long wooden planks connecting to the end of the lotus veranda and the ground floor as an inclined janeway. And uh, this fresh harvest uh, highland berry needs to be hanged on drying racks for 10 to 20 days. In drier seasons, drying racks are uh, in other seasons. Uh, sorry, sorry. In other seasons, drying racks can be used uh, in, uh, for other vegetables and other beans. And when highland berry is dry, then the thrashing process will be carried out in a flat place. And this process usually happens on the topmost of tower divisions, the terrace. And the first ears of highland berry are separate from the strut and the place in the center of the flat place. And two or more farmers stretching them with long wooden feathers. We can see from the next photos, uh, old mama and uh, put these tools for stretching. And uh, for women, uh, they want to separate the grain and the, the outers of the grain. And they re rely on the natural winds, wind in this region. And uh, firstly, they collect the mixture of grain and the chaff into a kind of uh, flat basket. And uh, then throw the mixture into the air to let the wind blow away the lighter part. And then the clean grain will be left in the bigger thread basket. And this process will be repeated and repeated until everything were done. And during 
those process, one construction should be done before those two process will happen. It's a special kind of wooden practice should be installed uh, surrounding the terrace to form a poor light area to prevent the grain jump outside the, the, the floor. So it's a very, and also we can find that there is a special terminology for this kind of wooden plants. And you can only find the land in the harvest season. In the other season, people will catch them all. And after all this uh, process, the train grain will be taken and stored in their uh, wooden granaries. Highland berry can still be eaten even after have been stored for many years. And uh, the form of these wooden granaries are quite similar and quite ancient. They are lot construction granaries. They are generally square with the side lengths around 2.5 meters and their heights are around 2 meters. And inside such kind of uh, wooden granaries, several pieces of thick uh, wooden boulders divided in those space into uh, different uh, trusters at a different height and for different kind of grain and the different years of grain. And we can find such kind of load construction in other uh, Tibetan area. This kind of load construction was regarded as the idea construction method a uh, method for theory storage in Tibetan religion. So because it can uh, very strong, and uh, so according to the earthquake uh, street in the Tibetan area, and uh, also the safe society, uh, so social factors of this region, not granaries will be the most stable construction for grant. We can also find um, historical images of Lord Granaries. This is in Yunnan from Han Dynasty, oh. so around 2000 years ago. And uh, from the, uh, also from the dictionary, I find one time, I could not read it in many, Maybe you, you will know how to pronounce this, this term. And this term from the description, it says it is, uh, is describe the amount of the grain, but it is also a kind of term for me to describe the building space. So for me, it seems like local also use part of the building space to describe the amount of their harvest. It's a kind of connection between building space and the harvest. Now let's come to the part that how people build such kind of building. And many local build, uh, tower dwellings are built with quite a mixture structure. It's mixed the, mixed the wood stone structure. So the study of Chesa house shows that there are around four types of structure used in a typical uh, tower dwellings. In the lower part is load bearing stone uh, structure and upper a little bit. In the middle part is load bearing stone structure mixed with inner wooden uh, posters. And the higher part is cantilevered wooden structure and 
the load structure. So inspiring such type of different wooden structure into stone structures uh, can reduce the building's load and also enlarge the indoor space. But also it can increase the uh, complete of the building process. Uh, in the past, the building process of tower deliveries in Japu area usually last for several years. And one house, uh, the house owner will invite at least one experienced masters to guide and lead the whole construction process. And this masters usually is a mason master. And the, the master and his group were mainly responsible for the main body of the buildings, but the wooden part was belong to the experienced carpenters. They were invited to build the cantilever verandas, the wooden granaries, the windows, and the some important interior finishes. And here we can see these two kind of uh, workers. The left is the carpenters, and the right is the vessel. And we start from the foundation. The foundation usually uh, is a prior very narrow square plans. And it will dig into the uh, ground to form the basement. Usually, the depths of this uh, basement will from half uh, one meters. And uh, to build such kind of high buildings, a style folder is a must. So. Uh, when building start, and uh, usually the sky folders are erect inside the, the surrounding wall instead of outer wall. And the first layer of sky folders is only 1.5 meters high when building the walls of the ground floor. With such kind of low height, women, uh, women, uh, who are responsible for carrying uh, mold and the loads can easily, uh, easily transport them to workers who are standing on the side folders that they can build the walls higher and higher. And when the wall rises to around three meters during the construction process, Workers began to do floor framings for the second floor, and then they can take apart the lower side folders and use the floor framings for the first of the second floor as a working platform. And they will reuse the style folding again on the uh, Second floor and build one uh, and build uh, the third floor's friend and then take a part again. So actually, they use very short stair folders and they reuse again and again until uh, reach to the height they need. So after the determined height, they need to prepare for the overhanging uh, verandas. They will first uh, uh, left uh, some holes for installing cantilevered uh, beams. And then carpenters will join the work from this time. They will come to install beams into this reserved horse. And these uh, beams 
Rose beans are quite important and usually made from a very special wood, local site Qingdangmu in this region, a very strong and hard wood. And the land, a group of short posters of the veranda and the several horizontal drying rails are assembled together to form a plan friends. And the carpenter's land will erect these prepared friends at the outer edges of the veranda. And they will put a small beans on the top of the outside enders of these cantilevered beans. And the land, the posters can carry uh, the upper part. The posters carry the drying posters were fold at their lower enders and the land fits on the wall paneled uh, beans beneath. And this is a uh, quite dangerous and scare for waters. So usually it should be patterned by uh, a group of carpenters, not for the uh, mansions as before. And after this stamp, after this stamp, carpenters will directly lay a series of upper beams, which are also supporting beams of the upper verandas on the pillars of these drying rails. Loaders of these upper beams helps these drying rails can keep stables in their place. And the land, uh, usually this two log construction should be done before the construction and the, on the ground floor because it need a flat place and a bit place to uh, build such kind of complicated load construction. And the land after they done this load granaries on the ground floor, they were take it apart. And the land transfer the pieces of the load granaries up on the uh, top of the buildings uh, and the land assemble these components again to be granaries on the floor of the story again. And then the final step of the construction project is flooring. The floors of the dwellings are traditionally com Bind by several layers. There will be wooden stitch, above it will be stone slabs or wooden planters, and the lamb leaves and the lamb rent us. And it was usually carried out, out by a group of women from this village or even neighboring villages in the past. This kind of tradition. Uh, I know it is still last in Tibetan area and the main surrounding Lhasa area. I heard still they have such kind of tradition. And the literary earth to cover each floor frame and the rent land into rent earth floor surface. It's also can be seen as a kind of festival because all women come and then they will sing and the dance together uh, above such kind of random earth floor. And uh, so after all this thing, after the whole floor was covered on, the, on this building and uh, the old components of this building become stable because, because of the weight of the floor. So, okay, so it's the finish of this kind of construction. And uh, here I would like to say that uh, from the dictionary of Japu, 
area. And uh, I find that they are a kind of uh, quite uh, various of terms used for describing wooden elements of overhanging verandas. I mean, each building elements got their names and much more than other part of the building. We will think why, why each small pieces of elements got its name in this uh, space. And I will suppose this can relate to the group working requirements during such kind of difficult construction process for the overhanging verandas. And because people need to work together and they need to transfer and assemble the elements in steps. So the name of these elements become necessary because they need to work together and they need to transfer different kind of elements. And it should not be wrong because it is a quite difficult a difficulty and a quite unsafe water in a very high space. But in the nearly, I think it's already nearly 70 years in this region, there is no more such kind of building was built in this way again. And we can see some of them were already demolished. Old people built new uh, dividings, new uh, shop dividings just behind the older one. And they will use the old and the tall buildings only for storage or only for drying their harvest. And we can see the difference between the new in front and the older in the background. And we cannot do anything. We can only to record and to, uh, to record as much as we can and to hope the local people can have a much happy future afterwards. And uh, in the end, I would like to express my appreciate to the dictionary and the, the idea, <laughs> the story, indeed, <laughs> helps me to get better understanding on the building of this region and uh, help me to know how excellent work local people did in the past. So it's the end. And uh, thank you very much for hearing. And uh, also for my, I'm very sorry again for my poor English.